might say, look at these systems, you know, that our shelter system has weight and things like that. But one of the reasons that our public systems experience weight is because people don't have a documented and reliable path to work and sustain themselves. Our processes today are so difficult that they make our immigration process difficult. But that doesn't mean that immigrants do not create a positive contribution to our country and our economy and our society. Contrary to the misconception that immigrants worsen the budget deficit and government debt, evidence suggests a different reality. Immigrants contribute positively to the economy and various ways. The Social Services Commissioner revealed at a city council hearing yesterday that the average cost per night of caring for a single migrant household, known as the per diem rate, stands at $388. This mother and her two kids have been staying at the Humanitarian Relief Center at Floyd Bennett Field, but she says this city should be providing more assistance. Uh, what I expect to have like help from American people, I did not see that. Okay, so we're gonna talk about the entitlement of these illegal immigrants in New York. And it's kind of funny to me, a lot of people are outraged, a lot of people saying, oh, it's such a sad story. But I think it's hilarious because the people of New York, overwhelmingly, <laughs> they voted for this. They asked for this, they voted for Biden, they put Eric Adams, Kathy Hoka, all these left-wing activists, people like AOC who say, oh, it's such a positive good to society. We need to let these illegal immigrants in and just make them citizens, give them work permits, give them all types of benefits <laughs> and lie and gaslight and tell the people of New York, oh, it's all good, they're net positive to society. <laughs> so they asked for this. So we're gonna talk about this story that just happened over the weekend a bunch of teenagers who were trying to play a soccer game in New York City, a bunch of American citizens were forced to cancel their game because illegal immigrants had their soccer field and refused to leave even when the cops showed up. But <laughs> before we talk specifically about that entitlement story, I want to show a news clip of a bunch of migrants. They stormed City Hall. These are all alleged African migrants and they storm the city hall. A lot of them are asking for jobs, surprisingly, because they're getting a lot of benefits. But many of them, they're just asking for more free stuff. Look, we need more time in this free shelter. You guys are not giving as many freebies as you were a year ago. What's the problem? We need more. We need more. Give us, give us, give us. So let's take a look at this clip. Chopper 2 was overhead this afternoon, showing the large group outside City Hall just how many people this issue is impacting. The steps of City Hall also packed. CBS 2's John Diaz reports now on the changes that they're calling for. Every migrant we spoke with has something in common. They want to work. Right now, they're trying to cut through all the red tape that's stopping them, asking local leaders to put pressure on Washington, D.C. to make a change. As dozens rallied on the steps outside City Hall and hundreds showed up in support nearby inside the council chambers, tears were shed for all black migrants impacted by what advocates are calling unfair treatment. They are here to show you that they belong and that they are here and that they should not be erased. Please listen to them. Tuesday, city council members held its first hearing to learn more about the experiences black migrants have been going through in New York. Black migrants have reported verbal and physical abuse due to the color of their skin. Federal immigration laws are either slowing down the process for these migrants to get working permits, or depending on what country they come from, it makes them ineligible. But when they give our work permits, we can work and take care of ourselves. Governor Kathy Hochul has tried to speed along the process. These migrants are also up in arms over language access barriers and temporary shelters, saying 30 days isn't long enough. This mother and her two kids have been staying at the Humanitarian Relief Center at Floyd Bennett Field. But she says the city should be providing more assistance. Uh, what I expect to have like help from American people. I did not see that. The relief center continues to be a point of contention for Republican council member Vicki Palladino, who says the city is already giving the migrants too much. This is absolute, absolute insanity at its finest. 
And most migrants we saw out here today were young men, but also we saw some families, including children and even some infants. <laughs> so there you have it. A lot of them are complaining and saying, oh, it's racist because we're African. You guys are just mistreating us because we're African. They're saying that they're not allowed to stay in the shelter as much as, I guess, the Chinese, the Latino, the Middle Eastern illegal immigrants. And one of the problems is most of the African immigrants are adult age men. Now, we have adult age men from all of these groups, but these are disproportionately, overwhelmingly single adults and mostly men. And the policy that they have is a single man only get 30 days while families get 60 days. So therefore, it results in these Africans being evicted much sooner than the other groups. Now, my opinion, they shouldn't be in there to begin with. They need to go back to where they come from. If they have such a problem, why are you here? If you say New York is so bad, all oh, your races, how are you going to come across an ocean? Talking about, oh, I'm seeking asylum. I'm looking for the better life. America's so great. Then you immediately arrive here and call them racist. If they're racist, why do you want to be around them? There are a lot of black people back in Africa where you came from. So if the people in New York are so racist, why do you want to be there? It doesn't even make sense. It seems like somebody is coaching these people because they're teaching them to use left-wing talking points to get what they want. They can say, oh, we're black, you're racist, you just don't like us. Soon they're going to start saying they're gay too. <laughs> so they're going to use all of these victimhood titles in order to garner sympathy from the Democrat Party and to get people outraged and protest. And that's going to force the New York government to spend even more taxpayer money on these illegal immigrants. They're saying, look, you need to speak our language. We come from all of these countries, all of these different tribes, all these areas in Africa. We speak a whole lot of different languages. So you New Yorkers, you people in New York need to learn our language in order to accommodate us. So I'm going to come here from Africa, from some random tribe with a small language, and I'm going to demand free stuff. But before you give me that free stuff, you need to learn my language. So when I come to you, you can understand exactly what I want. Doesn't make sense, but <laughs> that's what they voted for in New York. Let's move on to this story here. So I'm going to show this news clip here about what happened. 40 kids went over to a soccer field. They had a scheduled game, had the coaches, had the referees and everything, got over there. Illegal immigrants already there, and they said, you know what, F it, we're not going anywhere. <laughs> Why don't you try and make us leave? <laughs> so let's look at this clip here. New York City soccer game, club game, got canceled over the weekend after a group of migrants refused to leave the field. You know, illegal immigrants, even after police were called. The field sits near two major uh, illegal immigrant shelters with multiple reports of violence. Our next guest is a New York City youth soccer coach who says the same thing happened to him and to his team. Outreach U, NYC co-founder George Lanisi joins us now. George, when you read the story, you related to it, right? Uh, yes, um, actually, we're uh, a youth football program, and yeah, we could relate to it. We showed up early for, uh, to set up the field, and when we got on the field, there was a full soccer game going on. And you knew these players didn't belong out there, right? It was a pickup game. Exactly. It was a pickup game. So the co-founder co of About You and president of the Harlem Jets, Alex Coombs, walked up to the guy running it and told him that we had a field. The field showed him our permit, and he refused to get off the field. And ensued to an argument for about 15 minutes and finally meet another coach just started lining up the cones right across the field and they started to walk off. So you got through this. Now this case, they waited there. They told the kids to get off. The NYPD told them to get off. They still didn't get off. They said, where's your permit? No one, no one really travels to the field with their permit, but the assistant coach got it. They came back, they had the refs and they did it. And they still, they fall, after all this, the parents said, you know what, my, I don't feel safe here. These guys aren't leaving the sideline. Uh, they pulled their kids off. Now think about that, how hard it is to get a field, to get kids together, 40 kids together, to go play a soccer game, a bunch of soccer games in one day, and then the kids have to go home because of this. Yes, the problem with it is that a lot of people don't have the perspective of what it's like in New York City. If you live in the suburbs, there's fields all over the place. It's hard to get a field in New York City, so there's a permit system. And when you're going out there and all of a sudden your game gets canceled because people won't get off the field that don't have a permit, it's heartbreaking because the kids in New York City just went through all this with COVID. We were the last to bring back sports. Now it's going around too with other people other than kids are being put first.
<laughs> Can you imagine the entitlement that is? So not only are they asking for freebies, they're demanding work permits, they're demanding food, they're talking about, oh, it was Ramadan, we can't eat this stuff, this stuff is nasty anyway, we don't like this food, you need to speak our language, give us the food that we want, give us the PlayStations, give us a luxury hotel, stop putting us in these nasty tents and shelters. And also, we're going to hijack public space like parks, like soccer field, we don't care if you had a permit or whatever, we're going to take possession of it. Look at what the police did. They asked the soccer teams, they asked the coaches for... Permits? Do you have a permit to be here? Why didn't you ask the illegal immigrants? Did the police ask the illegal immigrants if they had a permit to be at the soccer field? Did they even ask them, did they have a permit to be in the damn country? So, New York City police, they're nothing more but the arms and the weapons enforcing the policies of the Democrat Party. So a lot of people saying, well, the cops didn't do their job. That is their job. Their job is to be the thugs and debos of the Democrat Party who are mistreating the citizens. And we saw this during C-19. We saw pastors being arrested. We saw people who own small businesses. They're forced to close up shop, restaurants, hair salons, and all of this. And the way it was enforced was with the NYPD. Eric Adams, Kathy Hochul, and it was Andrew Cuomo at the time. These guys use the cops to enforce their four left-wing policies. So when we have a situation like this with these illegal immigrants, and the cops are saying, well, American citizens, coaches, do you have a permit? We're not worried about the illegal immigrants. Do you have a permit to be here? Of course, this is their job. This is what they are getting paid to do to enforce it, to protect the illegal immigrant and to mistreat the American citizens. But again, this is what the people in New York voted for. So I can only feel so bad for them. Really, I don't feel bad at all. Maybe for the children, but... These adults who sit here and talk about, oh, Trump is so terrible, Trump is so bad, Joe Biden is a great president, voting 80% up there in New York for Joe Biden, you brought this on yourselves. So let me know what you guys think of this story. Leave me your thoughts below, share the video. Thanks for watching.